Right. Chapter 7, Section 7, it's perfect squares. And square roots. So perfect squares and square roots. First thing I want to address is just like, what is a square root? What's a square root talking about? And usually square roots are abbreviated with a, a radical sign like that. They call that a radical. So this may be a uh, it means what squared equals a number. Or maybe I should put a number inside there. So if I have square root of a number, uh, what it's really trying to say is what number squared equals that number that I started with. So for example, what I'm trying to say there is if we have square root of 25, what that's really trying to say is what number times itself, what number squared equals 25? And the answer has to be 5, because 5 times 5 is 25. Or you could say, like, square root of 49, square root of 49 is going to equal what number times itself, what number squared is 49? It's not 6 times 6, that's 36, 7. Because 7 times 7 is 49, square root of 49 then equals 7. Do you guys know how to punch this into your calculator? Then, All right, so on your calculator, you have your squared button right there, and you'll notice the radical sign is right above it. And in this calculator, it's in a light blue, so if I want to pick that one, first I hit the second button up here, and it'll say a little second in the bottom of the screen. Then I hit my squared button, I get the radical symbol. So if I want to do square root of 49, then I type in 49 and then just hit enter, and it tells me 7, because 7 squared or 7 times 7 equals 49. Some calculators, you have to first type in 49 and then hit the radical symbol afterwards. So if that doesn't work, you're getting an error on yours, then try that. Graphing calculators are going to be the same sort of thing. Uh, that you'll notice you also have an x squared button and the radicals right up above it. So then for this one, if you wanted to do the square root of 49, you could just do that second and then your squared button, type in 49 and enter and you're done. Other thing I'll throw it here in brown that this here is a radical sign. So the square root bracket thing there is a radical sign. <laughs> if it was late 80s or 90s, radical is a totally different word. Um, we good on those? Alright, then jump into the next thing. Uh, I want to say next definition here is going to be a perfect square. And I'd leave a line, maybe yeah, one blank line, to kind of write the definition, but I'm going to see if you can get it. So we have a 1 would be one number, another perfect square is going to be 4, another one would be 9, anybody see the next one? 16, very good. Should we let her do another or give somebody else a try? 25. Okay, anyone else? 36. 36. 49. 49, so give somebody else a try. Okay, yep, she's giving it away on me. So here we have 1 squared, and we have 2 squared. Yep, so 64 would be the next one, and then we'll just kind of... I'm going to quit writing them at least. You keep going. But a perfect square is going to be a number, an integer squared. Um, or you could say a natural number, a counting number of squares. We have 4 squared, then 5 squared, 6 squared, so on. So a perfect square is a number you get by squaring an integer. If you know these things, it's going to make things a lot easier as you go down the road. So my plan is to ask you to have these things memorized up to 15 squared. And at first that sounds really awful, but my guess is you pretty much know most of them. You just go through and it's like, all right, 1 times 1, 2 times 2, 3 times 3, 4 times 4, and so on. So on your test, I'm going to have like list the perfect squares, boom, go. And... There will be somewhat of a time limit to that, uh, so 
you want to not have to get out your pencil and paper and do okay, 12 and 12 and okay, 2 times 2 is 4 and 2 times, you know, so. So, so just memorize those. It's going to make life tons easier as you go down the road. Do you want to know where the perfect squares come from? Maybe I shouldn't ask it that way. The, way. the reason they call them perfect squares is, and I wouldn't add this to your notes, but the area of a square is going to be the side length squared, right? So if we have any of these numbers here for the area, so if you take, say, 25 is my area, what do the dimensions of my square have to be to give me an area of 25? 5 and 5. Five. Uh, so, so if I had a 5 and a 5, I'd get an area of 25. So they call like 25 a perfect square because if you have that area of 25, your side length comes out nice on the, on the square. Or if my area was 36, then I'd have to have sides of 6 and 6. So that's where that term perfect square comes from. All right, want to do some examples. Uh, so I'm going to say, I'll maybe call this example 1, even though he listed perfect squares as an example. But I'm going to say, is 225 a perfect square? Yes. And why no or why yes? If you put it in your calculator, it's 15. That one way to check that is we're trying to say, is a nice number squared 225? So do we get an integer, a no decimal number squared is 225? If you want to check that, if you do square root of 225, that radical sign, the square root is saying, well, what number squared gives me 225, right? So square root of 225 is 15, which then tells us, maybe if I write 15 in blue, once you type in square root of 225 and get 15, that tells us that 15 squared is 225. So 225 is a perfect square. You get an integer that equals that. If we get the same sort of thing, I'll say example 2, and say is 222 a perfect square? So is 222 a perfect square? We're really trying to say, do we get a nice integer squared equaling 222? We check that by doing yep, square root of 222. And if we punch that in, I end up with, I probably should do like approximately equals to, because it doesn't work out nicely. So square root of 222 is approximately equal to 14. 0.89966, so maybe I'll just say 14.9. Uh, so it's not a perfect square because we didn't get a nice integer. As soon as you get a decimal there, you know that, is it a perfect square? The answer would be no. Right. Next example, my example three. Example three is going to maybe look a little bit more normal. It's going to say, what is the length of a side? Example three, what is the side length? of a square with an area of 144. And the answer is 12. We're going to take a long way to get there, though. Nice job, Amanda. Uh, Because I want you to be able to do it if the area was 100. That's why we're kind of doing the long way. So. so what we know is we know that the side times the side equals the area. Or you could say area equals the side squared. So if we have 144 equals S squared. What do you do to 144 to find the S? You, you do the square root. If you kind of want the proof for why you do the square root, it's like this. You could look at it as though if 144 equals S squared, you could do something to the left side as long as you also do it to the right side. And what's really happening is this. The square root, this red radical right here, and the squared cancel each other out and just leave you with S. So square root of 144, like we said already, is 12. So we know that it's 12 times 12 is 144. But that would also work if the area is like 103, just then you're going to get a decimal. You have to do square root of 103 to find the length of the side. Oh, she was going to gossip. Example four. So we'll say, 
What's the perimeter? What's the perimeter, for example, three? Bless you, Trevor. So if we go back to that, if we have a square, we know that the side length was 12. So we have a square that's 12 by 12. How do we get perimeter? Perimeter is really just asking for the distance around. Uh, last year they defined the perimeter as 2 times the base plus 2 times the height, because then that would work with a rectangle. But in our case, it's, so you could say 2 times 12 plus 2 times 12, or 12 plus 12 plus 12 plus 12. Um, or I'm just going to say with a square, it'll just be 4 times 12, so 48. If you'd rather, you could say 2 times 12 plus 2 times 12. But one way or another, I'm guessing you guys are okay on perimeter. You've been doing it for a while. <coughs> Next one, my example 5. We're almost done. Two more quick examples. Example 5, square root of 7. If you could do this without a calculator, this might be on the no calculator page. Square root of 7 is between what two integers? So square root of 7 is between what two integers? So if we're looking at our numbers, well, square root of 7 is between what two perfect squares? 4 and 9. So if we have like square root of 4, square root of 9, square root of 7 would be right between those two. Square root of 4 just equals 2. Square root of 3 equals, oops, square root of 9 equals 3. So square root of 7 is going to have to be 2 point something going to be in between there somewhere. So if you have to estimate, you could kind of use those as a way to estimate what it's going to be. Ready for the last example? <laughs> last one, last one. Example six is find. Uh, so a big square root this time with a fraction inside, 81 over 25. So what's the square root of 81 over 25? The key to this is if you have a fraction inside a, a radical, inside the square root sign, that really it's the square root of both. So it's the square root of 81 over the square root of 25. And I'm hoping that by now you can do those in your head. Square root of 81 is 9. So we're saying what square root is 81? That's 9. Square root of 25 is 5, because what times itself? What square root is 25? So our answer would be 9 over 5, or as a mixed number it would be 1 and... Five goes into nine one time evenly, right? Five, ten, one, and four fifths. Because five goes into nine once, and that'll take five of the nine away, leaving four left. So final answer would be one and four fifths.